Yes, 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 see you all here. Now, to, on today's Tech Thursday, I want to do some hardware modding of my PS4. So, I have a 500 gigabyte PS4, one of the original models, you know, this is for the players. Yes, that is my name there, that's so cool. Um, but every time I want to play a game these days, I have to delete a game. Or every time I want to update, for example, big update like Destiny, I have to delete a game. It's becoming really frustrating. So what I need to do is get rid of the 500 gigabyte hard drive and install a new hard drive. So what I have done is, I have done a few things. So I purchased a four terabyte hard drive. This is a Seagate hard drive. But you will notice this is a full size 3.5 inch hard drive. It's not a 2.5 inch laptop hard drive. Now in the PS4, that takes a smaller laptop hard drive. So what I've done, I bought one of these because it's a lot cheaper than buying a laptop sized hard drive. Laptop sized hard drives are quite expensive and especially for something of this capacity. Uh, officially, by the way, the PS4 only supports up to two terabytes, but it can support up to four terabytes if you disable rest mode. Rest mode is not something I use all the time anyway, so I'm fine. I want to future-proof my PS4. If you think about how quickly it took you to fill 500 gigs or one terabyte, think about how quickly it will tell you, take you to fill two terabytes. Therefore, that is why I've gone with four. Right, so in order to use this, I have purchased a special piece of kit called a data bank. This, this right here is from Nyko. Now, I've just taken this side off. But um, what this essentially does is it goes on the side of your PS4. There we go, like this. So this will go on the side of my PS4 where the hard drive casing is and it will plug in the back. So it will take power. So this goes into the PS4 and then on the other side is where you put the normal power cable. And it just enables you to use a regular hard drive. So if I open this up again, all I do is I slot in my hard drive, clicks in, real nice, and then I'm done. Okay, simple as. And the way it connects is, it comes with this little adapter. This is the size of a laptop hard drive. So this will go in the PS4 where a hard drive normally would, that will clip in there. And then this end will connect to the underside of my data bank, like so. So then that's how this clips on. Right, we're gonna do it anyway, you're gonna see it, don't worry. Before you get to that, some important steps. You're gonna need one of these. You're gonna need a USB drive. The reason you need one is to back up your PS4. And you can, actually, it would help if you had one of these, if you had an external hard drive. So the way I did it is, the first thing you need is the PS4 software. So after installing a new hard drive, you're going to have to reinitiate your PS4 and it will format your hard drive in the way that PS4 uses it. So you go onto the link that I'm going to put down here, which will be PS4 system software update. On that page, don't download the update. You're not trying to update your PS4. Click the link that says, do you want to perform a fresh install of the full system software? Yes. Click that link. You want to install a fresh install and that's double size, like 700 megabytes instead of 350 or whatever. Not a massive deal. So download that to a USB drive. So that's what I have here. This is my system software. When you've got that, you're halfway there. The next thing you need is either a USB thumb drive or an external drive. Now this is for backing up your PS4. So it depends how you want to do it. You can either, on a smaller drive like this, back up your save files, and that's about it. Or if you have a larger capacity drive like this, you can save everything. So as of 2.50, PS4 software update, you can now back up your whole PS4. It used to be you had to download save files individually, which would take forever. But now you can also download all your save files together as well as all of your apps. So if you have PT, for example, something you can't download anymore, you can download it, back up everything. But it's gonna take a long time. To back up a 500 gigabyte hard drive took me at least three hours, so I left it on overnight. Um, because obviously you can't use your PS4 while it's backing up. I'll show you how to back up in a moment. But the thing is, you're gonna have, if you want to get it as speedy as possible, you want a USB 3 drive, 3.0, and you're going to want to format this in XFAT, not FAT32 like the guides tell you. So format this in XFAT, it will go a lot faster, three hours instead of six, or something like that. And like I say, if you just want to save your save files, just back them up onto this. You don't need all your apps 
or if you don't need all the apps. If you have a fast internet connection, you can re-download the games that you want and the updates that you want, but I don't, so I want this route. So there we go, I've backed up everything onto this. What I'm gonna do next is install the hard drive and then reinitiate and I'm gonna catch all this for you guys. Here we go, let's do this. So I have all the kits that I need with me here. You get the mini screwdriver with the Nyko set. Slide off the top of the PS4, nice and easy. And you can see straight away the hard drive is right there. So if we just unscrew this in supersonic fast mode um, with the uh, provided screwdriver. There we go. Just the one screw, nice and easy. It should just slide out like so. And there you have it. There is the PS4 hard drive. Now, if we replace that with the hard drive look-alike, look -alike, rather, from the Nyko kit, just slot straight back in there, and you can see the connector at the top. Uh, screw it in nice and securely, because we want everything to be secure with this setup. And then we're going to connect the kit to the top of this kind of connector. Right? Grab the kit. Don't have the hard drive in it like I did. Uh, simply slide this on and then we're going to connect a cable to the hard drive beware of the power cable uh, at the back just make sure you align everything nicely don't want the ps4 to be too bulky this is going to add some bulk to it i'm not going to lie but it's not completely bulky um, it doesn't slide on quite from the top i just make sure the cable's right the way there so yeah just place it on around mid-range there and just slide into place again make sure that's in tight and then we put this connector into the hard drive connection which is kind of the bridge between the ps4 and our actual hard drive that we're going to slot in so that's in place there again make sure that's secure because there's no kind of screws or anything it just clicks in and then we put our hard drive in slide this in bit of a click and you know it's in. Then we can just place the end of the Nyko unit on top and everything is snug as a bug. It is a, bit, a little bit fiddly, but just make sure everything's in place correctly. And there you have it. That was so easy to install. It's a joke how easy and simple that was. As you can see, there is a little bit of a power adapter that goes at the back. We plug this in where the power cable normally would go and the power cable goes into that. So the hard drive is grabbing some extra power nice and easy there it is the ps4 with its new bulky hat the uh be careful of the top as well as i said everything just slides in place it's not really as secure as it could be just you know be careful and there it goes i quite like it to be honest it's not it could be worse if it was the whole side that would be too fat but because it's just the top you know just the left that's great i can deal with that so let's get everything plugged in and then pop in the USB stick that has your PS3.0 firmware driver installation on there. So the initiation is going to happen through this USB. You've got to connect your controller with a USB cable because that's how we're going to power on the PS4. Not everything's going to be synchronized when we first boot up because obviously there's no system software there so it doesn't remember um, which ps4 controller you have so if we turn on the control sorry if we turn on the ps4 by holding down the power button for seven seconds ish until you hear it beep a second time so it beeps when you press it and then wait until you hear it beep again then you can let go and then we will be in safe mode so from safe mode we can now go all the way down to initialize ps4 with USB storage device. Right now we have 3.0 on the device, ready to go. So we press OK. This is going to load it up. I will fast forward this. It's, it's going to say everything's going to be deleted, which is fine. There's nothing installed on the hard drive as of yet anyway. So there we go. It will initialize. And then after initializing, it's going to update. And I think that took about five or ten minutes, not too long. Uh, there you go. It's going to prepare to update, sorry, and then it will update. There we go. Again, this took about five or ten minutes as well. So there's a lot of waiting around through this process. I've obviously sped it up for the video purposes. And then we finally boot into Sony. So this is the first time the installation, well, the operating system actually boots up properly. So now our new hard drive has the OS installed. 
go through the basic setup options as you did when you first plugged in your PS4 for the first time. You can connect to the, hot, uh, to the internet, you can install your PlayStation camera, etc, etc. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Make sure your time and date are correct. And then this is an important step. Make sure any power saving options are off. Because if you're using a larger hard drive than I think it's any bigger than two terabytes, you're not going to be using uh, the uh, the safe, what's it, rest mode? Yes, you're not going to want to use rest mode because the hard drive is too big. The PS4 drivers can't cope. So anything that turns your PS4 off automatically into rest mode, disable. Okay, agree with the agreements and there we are. Now we have a working PS4 with a four terabyte hard drive. The next step, we've initiated it. So we take out the initiation hard drive, that's done. That USB stick is done with. Now we plug in the external hard drive or USB stick that has your backup on it. So now we're going to restore all our games, our apps, our save files, everything to the PS4. Because right now it's an empty shell. It could be a brand new PS4. And if you want to use it that way, that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to restore mine from a backup. I want everything back. So now I can finally capture it. I apologize for the graininess before that was a camera recording my projector. Now I can finally capture because I'm able to disable HDCP uh, now that we're properly back onto the OS and not in safe mode. So you go into system in the settings and then you go down to backup and restore. You go to restore your PS4 and there is the restore file. You can see I have got 400 gigabytes worth of apps and games. I'm going to restore the whole thing and this literally took about three hours. Uh, obviously, I'm going to speed through it in three seconds rather than three hours, but it was a lot of waiting around. So be prepared to leave this on overnight or while you go to work or something like that. You don't, certainly don't want to do it when you want to play games. And boom, there you go, right there and then. That's it. Straight back into how my PS4 was. Signed in as me, showing the last game I played and all my games on, this, on the slider there. Everything's on the launch bar as it was when I backed it up. It's amazing. If I go over to settings now, if I go into see the application store, oh, the store, system storage management, then I can see how many applications I'm using, like 380 gigabytes worth. You can see I've got 3.58 terabytes, which means four terabytes of space. Fantastic. I've got over three terabytes of space left. This should last me a while now. I go to downloads. I can finally install the downloads that I couldn't get before, like the Destiny updates. It just wouldn't happen. I didn't have enough space. There we go. It's happening now. Brilliant. It's so good to have space, you don't understand. Or perhaps you do. So there we go, everything's preparing, everything's downloading. I'm a happy guy. I can launch the games as well straight away. It will remember them as if I've just played them. It basically clones the hard drive, really. Launch Diablo, that was the last game I played. And this should go back into my saved game. And you should see, without a problem, my save file. As far as the game's concerned, I am Sporkings. Love this game, by the way. If you haven't played this game, grab it on a console. Grab the console version because it has all of the content. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a new character I created recently. Let's see if it's still got my old character as well. Just to prove that my save files are here. Okay, so yeah, there's my two characters. Good. I'm happy come out of this game, don't have time to play right now, but there you go, that is an upgraded PS4 hard drive from 500 gigabytes to 4 terabytes. Remember, never enter rest mode unless you want to lose your saves and stuff, because you can turn it off into rest mode, but you can't turn it on from rest mode, you have to turn it on from off. That's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers!